behaviour. Whether it's a tourist with a camcorder, a ranger on a game drive, or just someone in the right place at the right time, the cameras never stop rolling. Each remarkable clip is broken down to reveal the truth behind the footage as eyewitnesses relive their heart-stopping experiences on camera. And top wildlife experts take us on a journey of explanation and discovery. From rare sightings, incredible kills, hilarious antics, to nail-biting escapes, this is wildlife caught in the act. For centuries, Africa has captivated the imaginations of explorers and adventurers, hunters and scientists. Yet no visitors to the African continent have arrived in numbers as prolific as the wildlife tourists of today. The promise of glorious sunsets and lion roars on the evening air, to experiencing the unique smell of a thunderstorm racing across the savanna, lures visitors from all corners of the globe. Robert Moore, owner of a private game reserve in South Africa, took his guests on a late afternoon drive, hoping for some action. We were just up for our sundowner game drive. In the distance, we heard some warning calls of our dominant male leopard. Immediately, I got all the guests together and we decided we would go and investigate and find out what they were up to. By this time, the sun had set, it was getting pretty dark and about four or five miles from where we were located, we got sight of the leopard. Suddenly, we noticed that there was further activity of some other smaller animal in the grass ahead of where the leopard was moving towards. The guests were at this stage getting incredibly excited, but I had to keep them calm and quiet because we didn't want to disrupt this interaction. The leopard suddenly picked up the movement of grass, went down on its haunches into the stalk position, and it started to move incredibly quietly through the grass. One of the key reasons why the warthog will squeal and make as much noise as possible is to distract the predator from finding the lockdown position, which is generally under the jaw of the warthog. but the warthog screams caught the attention of another night prowler. Suddenly, a female hyena came out of the bush. The leopard jumped off, and the hyena, realizing how close she actually was to the leopard, still active in the kill mode, decided to step back as well, which left the warthog standing there completely surprised not understanding, I think, quite what had happened, but then disappeared into the surrounding grass and managed to get away. Guests want to see what they've seen on television, and when they arrive in South Africa, this is what they want to see when they come on safari. And strange enough, they got to see a kill, and they got to see a happy ending to it. Survival in the wild is tough, and when it comes to fighting for food, even the smallest scavengers are known for their boldness. Snatching tasty morsels from much larger predators takes some guts. We were on holiday in Kruger National Park and we were driving from Lower Salby to Chokwani. We saw a female cheetah with her three cubs walking in the opposite direction. And then all of a sudden she disappeared. We decided we're not going to see her again and we turned around to go to Chokwani again. Out of the blue, the cheetah was there, and she was on a little steering book. She caught it. But the ravenous cubs were not the only spectators, silently watching and waiting in the wings. All of a sudden, a jackal came out and started nipping her tail. He disturbed her in such a manner that the little steering book escaped. When she did that, the jackal was there, nipping at her tail to get her off the steering book. We know that jackal are cheeky, but never knew that they could be so audacious. Tourists are not the only visitors to Africa's wildlife areas. 
Amateur and professional photographers and cameramen roam the wilderness areas for weeks at a time, searching for that perfect shot. I got there later than when the action was actually happening. There were lions and hyenas everywhere, and more noise than I think I've experienced in the bush. Hyenas whooping and howling all over the place, and these lions running around defending a kill as best they could. On shoot in Sabi Sabi Game Reserve, Vanessa spent two months filming wildlife interactions in the bush. It was already fairly late in the day and it became a struggle between lions, hyenas and heat really because as it got hotter and hotter the lions got lazier and lazier. The females were already just lying under the tree and just lacked the energy to keep defending this kill. One sub-adult male was making the most valiant effort defending this carcass and he kept fighting off all these hyenas that were coming in in droves really. It looked at one point as if he was trying to get shade in the actual carcass. And then he'd come jumping out again and chase off the hyenas and they'd run away again. Lots of screaming and whooping going on. And then slowly, slowly they'd come in again. And sometimes the two lionesses would come out and do their share trying to keep the hyenas off. but eventually they did take it over. It looks a lot more confrontational than it really was. We often like to call them mortal enemies when really there was no malice there. It was sort of a mutual decision. Like, okay, lions, you've had your share. Now hand it over. And I've heard of actually it being reversed too, where the hyenas are making the kills and the lions are scavenging. Wildlife cameraman Warren Samuels has been filming in Africa for many years. One of the greatest wildlife events that I've ever been fortunate to film was hyenas hunting topis in the Maasai Mara in broad daylight. What happens at this time of the year, the topis are mating. There's a lot of activity amongst the males, chasing each other and fighting. And with all this frenetic activity, the topis get tired. Come mid-morning, midday, they all drop down and they go to sleep. As the topis all start sleeping, the hyenas come out of their puddles where they've been lying, keeping cool during the day. And they get up and they just sort of course through the herds. And it's the body language. He's just sort of walking through the herd, minding his own business, but it's very deceptive. The topies don't associate the hyenas with a threat, as they would do, say, if it was a big part of lions. They're going to go for an individual as fast asleep calves if they can because it's a much easier target. When eventually he does find an animal that's fast asleep, he'll approach it and then he'll adopt that typical stalking pose. It's incredible because they actually stalk the topi like cats do, like a lion would stalk a topi. In this particular incident, the calf was lying next to the mother. The hyena stalked in close to the car. Got hold of the car, and the hyena's got to hold on to it. It's the anchor. The first animal is the anchor. The topi starts emitting this alarm call, the sort of snort. Other hyenas that are lying in wallows nearby hear the sound. Well, that's the signal. They all rush in there. You know, second hyena, third hyena, fourth hyena, and they all lock onto this animal. This topi mother charged in on this hyena and actually butted the hyena. Eventually, just through sheer numbers, they pull this animal down and they just sort of tear it to pieces. A raucous feeding frenzy gets underway. Hyenas squabbling over the scraps, devouring the carcass as quickly as they can. But they better eat quickly. They have no idea they're being watched. There was a pride of lions that chose this one single tree out in the open plains where these hyenas were hunting the topis. And they used to go and lie under this tree. And every time a hyena hit a topi, these lions would rush in. 
It just shows how opportunistic the lions are. They just learned that here was an opportunity to scavenge off the hyenas and actually steal the kill. In the wild, battles for dominance are commonplace and rarely fatal. Yet the intensity of the scene witnessed by brothers Justin and Tim Hrisel had them doubting that the underdog in this fight would come out alive. It was late at night, we were in Khalifadi um, Park. My brother and I decided to go uh, check out the water hole just before we went to bed. And just before we were about to leave, we heard this shrieking, like screaming noise. It sounded like a baby crying. So we quickly went back. I left my brother to go fetch my dad. Be excited, he ran back with me. There were two brown hyena right in front of the hide, right in the lights. There was blood everywhere on the ground. In this footage, we're seeing two brown hyenas interacting in what is commonly known as a neck bite, where they both try to grab each other on the neck and, and there's a tussle that ensues. The really interesting thing about these types of interactions is that they can only take place on the edge of clan territories. But they can happen between males and females. And it seems to be some kind of territorial interaction that's taking place. The one animal is clearly dominant. Its fur is raised up to give the illusion of being a bigger animal. And the other animal is the one that's probably making all of the noise. The extreme vocalizations that we're hearing are probably a mixture of pain and submission. Very often the vocalizations are incredibly loud. It carries for a long distance and it goes on sometimes for several minutes. They fought for quite a long time until they were both so exhausted that they both just collapsed. There was definitely a winner that emerged from the interaction. It seems the winner stays in the area and the loser leaves, and this is probably what happened now. I've only seen brown hyena maybe once or twice. It's a once in a lifetime sighting. You don't see brown hyenas fighting every day. It's rare sightings like this that inspire wildlife enthusiasts to visit these parks in the hope of spotting incredible animal behaviour. For local residents like Nico Hodgson from South Africa, spending holidays in the bush is a regular and much loved pastime. My cousin and I chose to visit the Kruger Park one year and went looking for action. We saw many animals, but no action. We decided that we were going to get up really early and look for lion spore on the dirt roads. That morning we were in luck. We hadn't driven far when we came across fresh tracks from the night before. We were very excited. We followed them. Only two kilometers down the road we found the lions resting. Two lionesses and a male lion, about 20 meters from the side of the road. We stopped immediately and got my camera and I started filming. As we were filming, another male, an older male, comes walking in right towards the vehicle. We knew instantly something was going to happen. We could see on the male's face that he was looking for trouble. He came and stood about two meters away from the car, sniffing the ground where the lionesses had urinated. He lifted his head and opened his jaws wide, flashing his yellow fangs, looking across at the lionesses. Suddenly, the younger male came charging in. They reared up, roaring and biting. That was something to see. My cousin got such a fright, he rolled up the window. The clash was over in a few seconds. The older male walked around, marking his territory in the trees and scraping the earth with his hind paws. He walked around the car again and, and then lay down under a tree and showed that he's the king of this territory. Pride males are only a temporary fixture in lion pride structure. Genetic diversity in lion populations is maintained by the regular takeover of prides by new males. The lighter colored one seems to be a younger male and he's marking his territory. By the scars on his face, the intruder seems to be the older of the two. 
But isn't it usually younger male lions that chase off older pride males in the event of a pride takeover? It's not a matter that always when a young male comes into a pride, chases off the alpha male, that, uh, that he's just going to settle for that. Sometimes they return within an hour or so to try and fight back to get what he's lost. And it almost seems to me that this is the pride leader that tries to take back what he's had. That does happen. Lions may be the big boys of the bushveld, but they aren't the only ones to fight over access to the ladies. Brothers Villiers and Francois Stein set off on a late afternoon game drive through the Lataba region of the Kruger National Park in South Africa. We saw these two monitors standing in the road. It sort of reminded me of a, of a miniature Jurassic Park scene. They were interlocked and tumbling, sort of head over tail, almost doing cartwheels right next to the vehicle. We obviously thought it's two males doing some kind of combat behavior. But then the one got on top of the other one, and the one at the top was biting the bottom one on the neck. So I was convinced that it was mating behavior. But Phileas was wrong. Now monitors, they will have male combat, which is basically a wrestling match. They'll rear up on their hind legs and they'll fight with each other and seeing who can throw the other one down. And I think the big confusion in this footage came through when the male did show signs of mating behavior, when he eventually dominated the smaller male, moving his head from side to side on top of the male's back. This you often see when a male is courting a female. I'd be really curious to know what the prize was for this male that ended up being the, the obvious victor in this scenario. Does he get all the females? Does he get more area? Does he get more food? Unlike mammals, reptiles in general don't have what we call a territorial type of system. They will have a home range and the area that they will move around in. But these areas will often overlap with other animals of the same species and even of the same sex. The way a female attracts a mate is by moving around during the mating season, leaving behind a scent of pheromone to an extent. Obviously, you can have one or two or three males that will, will link up on the same scent trail. And when they get closer to the female, they come into contact with each other, they'll start this combat. For the female, this is a win-win situation. She's all about securing the, the, life, or the life of her young. And by doing that, she wants the strongest, most virile male mating with her. And by the males having combat, this is how that's obviously achieved. It was just incredible to capture that kind of footage for a smaller animal, something you don't see that often. As a scientist and a photographer, um, it was like a dream come true. Monitor lizards have since become our favorite reptile, <laughs> maybe favorite animal of all time. <laughs> Over the last two years, researcher Craig Jackson has observed the interesting dynamics of pack life while studying wild dogs in Botswana. We've had a single alpha male that since we reintroduced the dogs, he's been the dominant male. Now, during the last mating period, that seems to have changed. In wild dog society, only the alpha pair of a pack will breed. During the mating period, the alpha male stays very close to the alpha female. But when Craig tracked the dogs via their radio collars one morning, a different male was walking alongside the alpha female. The previous alpha male, he was just at the back of the pack. So immediately you could see that something had happened, something had changed, and I just presumed that he was now the new top dog. And about an hour, hour and a half later, they went into an open area. So he obviously challenged the original alpha male. These two males started to fight the whole pack got involved and basically turned on the challenger. So this made it very difficult for him to actually take on the alpha male. He's a very old dog, he's lost quite a few teeth, so he's not maybe as fit and strong as he was a few seasons back. He then moved into a bush to protect himself and then he ran straight through them again, back to the alpha male. Jumped up and started fighting, but once again, the whole pack climbed in. They dragged him around and really bit him quite badly. He was bleeding quite a lot, especially on his hindquarters. He got up from this and just had to make a run for it. The whole pack looked at a little bit confused and puzzled by what had happened, and they sort of just stood around and watched him move off. Immediately after the fight, the alpha male went back to the alpha female and started mating with her immediately. 
This was far more disturbing than watching the dogs hunt or kill for food, just because it's very different and strange to see the dogs which work together as a pack and as a team turn on one of their own and attack him in quite a severe way. Wildlife cameraman Fergus Clark was given the opportunity to test out his sea legs while filming a documentary on the hunting techniques of great white sharks off the shores of Cape Town. But this was no ordinary shoot. The crew was using a special high-speed camera designed to capture footage at a staggering rate of 1,000 frames per second, allowing the viewer to appreciate split-second action played back in slow motion. And I'd heard stories of how long you have to wait with this heavy camera on your shoulder, keeping it as steady as you possibly can, just in the hope that something will pop out the water, which is, to me, seems strange, because it doesn't even look like it's there, it's just water. Great white sharks are known to attack prey on the surface by shooting up from the depths, with such an incredible force that the momentum sometimes launches the shark's entire body, which can weigh up to three tons, clear of the water. Hoping to lure a shark into demonstrating this breaching behavior, the team drifts a seal-shaped decoy along behind the boat. We started trawling around, waiting for the shark, slowly waiting. I was focused in on the, on the decoy, ready to go. And all of a sudden, this massive great white reaches straight out of the water, clean out, tail above head, and then back into the water with massive splashes. And you just realize the size of this thing is huge. Massive animal with the agility of a ballerina or something. <laughs> In a matter of seconds, it was done. It was almost surreal. You almost sort of ask yourself, did, did I really see that? After that, it's a mad scramble because there's mass excitement everywhere with people on the boat. We had to stop the high-speed recording and save it. And it's quite like a fiddly thing to do on a moving boat that's going up and down. Shooting in high speed is a gamble. Once you stop recording, the footage will take eight minutes to download before you can play it back and know if you got the shot or not. When everything settled down again to a mild panic, we viewed the footage and then to see it in high speed, that's where you get the full understanding of how much power is being unleashed by this incredible, incredible predator smashing out the water. Incredibly dramatic. Competition for survival in the wild is commonplace. Clashing over the same territory, food and mating rights is understandable. But the confrontation Tana Nell caught on camera in Itosha National Park defied all reasoning. It was getting dark. We were at the water hole. I was standing there with the camera and I thought, well, let's see if anything is happening. There were other tourists with us there and everybody just said, shh, 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 you're not allowed to make a noise. On the other side of the waterhole, a massive shape suddenly appeared out of the shadows. Firstly, the elephant came walking around the waterhole all the way from the further side and started eyeing out a rhino bull. Coming closer, coming closer, I'm staring at each other. I'm still having this camera on my hand. All of a sudden, this elephant just went for this rhino. Rolling it in the bushes three meters in front of me. I got a hell of a fright. A black rhino is an animal that will always stand his ground. But this black rhino made a mistake with the elephant bull. This bull is in full, full must. The temporal gland is streaming. It's not running, it's actually streaming. Both insides of the back legs are totally wet. And once he realized that, man, he can actually have a fight with the black rhino, the black rhino was in big trouble. We heard terrible screams coming from the rhino. We thought he got hurt. The black rhino can just be glad that there was no penetration from the tusk because that normally is fatal. But I think he got badly hurt, especially his hips and some of the internal organs. My mom just said, wow, you know, this is also uh, unbelievable. And you were so lucky just to capture that incident on camera. The elephant bull totally, totally wrecked the, the black rhino. I ascribe that to total aggression and, and not to any strange or funny behavior. But the behavior Peter Craig Cooper and his wife witnessed in the Khalakhadi National Park was strange and disturbing. Watching a pride of lions resting along the dunes late one afternoon, 
Peter took no notice of a group of cubs harassing one of the lionesses until she moved off and he realised she was carrying a newborn cub in her mouth. The six young lion followed her down. All of a sudden there was a tremendous commotion. The next minute, one of the young cubs had this newborn in its mouth and it was running away. Dropped it a couple of times. And then as soon as any one of the other young lions came near it, it would then quickly grab it and run off with it again. It was disturbing watching this because we had never seen anything like this in our lives before. A couple of the females did venture close, but this youngster, who had obviously control of it, dropped it and almost threatened the female, which again we felt quite strange. We couldn't understand at that time exactly why this was happening. What we see in this footage is that one of the females has given birth. The babies seem to be anything between about three to six days old and she's just sort of displaying these young ones now after a few days. It's, it's possible that this is a first time mother and that she's not all that attentive on her young ones and allows these young cubs to make acquaintance with her baby in a little bit of a rough fashion as it seems to us. The one individual, and unfortunately one can't establish whether this is a male or a female cub, that actually takes over that young baby and then walks off with it. But Professor Van Hoerfen has a far less sinister explanation for the cub's seemingly violent behavior. It might be a young female cub with an early mother instinct that's carrying that baby around. She or he actively protects the baby even against the mother. She's extremely tolerant to have a young cub ill treat a newborn, and that's strange. You know, they are normally very protective about the young ones. Maybe she senses that the young cub does not have any ill intentions. The youngster headed off up into the dunes, and that was the last we saw of it, not knowing what had transpired at the hands of these six uh, mischievous lions. Mammal mothers naturally have tight bonds with their offspring. So what dire circumstances could convince a mother to abandon her baby in the wild? We were driving along a dirt road in the Kruger Park. We came across a waterhole and stopped to see if there are any wild animals around. And that's when we noticed the baby elephant in the waterhole. We sat wondering what's going to happen to this thing. At one stage, I considered driving to the water and trying to get it out myself. But you feel powerless, and the baby elephant kept on slipping and sometimes losing its balance and sliding back into the water. Around five or ten minutes later, a park sport vehicle pulled up, and the two game wardens also didn't know precisely what to do. They checked around to see if it was safe, and then drove up right next to the waterhole and got into the water, and pushed the baby elephant out, as he just couldn't do it alone. They finally got him out and tried to get him to go off into the bush, but he just kept on coming back, and coming to the vehicles as if the vehicles were his family, his herd. Once the game wardens had left, he came over to us again and lifted his little trunk, opened his mouth and tried to suckle on the car. This baby seemed to have been fine, seemed to be healthy, definitely a newborn. You can still see the umbilical cord in, in some of the footage and drastically looking for milk to try to suckle anywhere on the car. This has been reported before with zebras and young buffalo that being abandoned from its mother, that it link onto a large object, like a car, it just shows desperation at that stage. 
He kept bumping and scratching the vehicle, and I got out and tried to get him away. But one feels so sorry for this poor soft little thing. You just feel like you must do something, but there isn't anything you can do. Because the kids felt so sorry for it, they kept on filming. Elephants have got very strong family bonds, and they won't let go of a baby very easily. For a mother to leave a baby, there's going to only be two reasons. Something very bad must have happened to the mother, that she would have died or got very sick to just let the baby go. Or there might have been something wrong with the baby in that the mother then just decided this baby won't make it in life. It was heart-wrenching. We don't know what happened to the baby thereafter, whether he was left there or if the herd came back to get him. But I got worried. If the herd came back to get him and were still there, there would be trouble. So we left. A baby elephant has the effect that it can bring back an elephant herd by screaming or making certain sounds. <laughs> In the event that an elephant herd returns for a lost member, they would actually be quite aggressive towards anything that stands in their way. Their concern is normally just about that animal. So as soon as they can get to the lost member or the lost child, they just take it away and they forget about everything around them. But in this case, I think it wouldn't have happened because it seemed that this baby was just totally abandoned. Elephants may be the largest land mammals in the world, but they spook easily. And when a breeding herd feels vulnerable, they can be violently hostile towards the subject they perceive as a threat. The dogs were about to get active late afternoon to go out hunting. Just as they had moved less than 100 meters from the den, they encountered a breeding herd of elephant. Elephants are reported to have killed young pups in the past, but this time round, it was the elephants who were feeling a little exposed. They had in their care a number of young calves. The yearling dogs approached, more curious than anything else. The elephants reacted immediately. They actually want to move out of the area. They see this as a potential threat for their young calves, but the dogs don't let them. As soon as they start moving away, or if they start to run away as a herd, the dogs just turn and chase. As they got closer, the elephants would often charge them. The dogs would turn around, back off a couple of meters, and as soon as the elephant had stopped and walked back to the herd, the dogs would turn around and follow them again. So I troubled the elephants a fair bit. As a result, made them quite aggressive. The dogs didn't back off. As it continued, the intensity and the seriousness of the charges increased. The cows were charging the dogs with serious intent to do some harm. The elephants get really upset and try and lash out at the dogs, even with their trunks if they get close enough. But the, the dogs are just so much quicker. I think it's quite amusing to see these massive animals so scared of dogs. They only weigh about 30 kilograms. Often the dogs come running right past the vehicle. They're not worried about the vehicle. And because the elephants are so focused on chasing the dogs, they sometimes only see the vehicle at the last minute. So that can be sometimes a little bit too close for comfort. Dudley Corston and his family were on holiday in the Kruger National Park when they spotted a hyena off to the side of the road and noticed that the hyena was watching something in the distance quite intently. A wildebeest lay dying under a tree a little way off, but a sudden flash of movement from another direction stole his attention in an instant. At the corner of my eye, I saw this water buck, and behind it was a pack of dogs. How exciting. Oh, it was magnificent. There were approximately 18 dogs, of which there were juveniles. Hard to estimate their age or anything, but there were eight of them. The dogs suddenly caught sight of the dying wildebeest. A free meal was too tempting to resist. About five of them cornered the water buck against the wall of the dam. The rest went and totally tore this wildebeest into shreds in a couple of minutes. But the dogs kept that water buck against the wall. They actually separated. They are such clever animals. If given the chance, virtually all predators will scavenge on occasion. Opportunism is the key to survival. Whether hunting or scavenging, food is food. Eventually, 
It actually ran up the wall, past all these cars, and then came running back again and went back in. I mean, if I was under attack, if I had the chance of getting away, boy, I would be gone. But it actually came back, and eventually it came up onto the sand road. And they were yapping and snapping at its hooves. And this buck was trying to fend them off. I think the water buck was trying to use the cars as a decoy to get away from the dogs. At one stage, it did stand right next to the car, and I had to tell my daughter to close the window because it was so close that if you put your hand out, you could have touched it. I don't think they are in fear of any vehicle. They will walk right up to your car. They will look at you as if you say, hell, Jack, who the hell are you? This is my territory. Game viewing in the Kruger National Park started in 1927. Over the years, generations of animals have adapted to the presence of vehicles in their habitat. As the vehicles pose no threat, the animals have no reason to fear them. One of the perks of being a guest at a private game reserve is access to a professional guide while on game drive. We have the advantage in the private lodges of knowing where the animals are so we can at least know where to start looking for them. Head ranger Giles Kalmanson knew just where to start when setting off with his guests for a late afternoon drive. We heard that there was a herd of buffalo coming down to a river to drink. And so I positioned us on the opposite bank and we were watching the spectacle unfolding in front of us. I knew that there were lions not too far away and sure enough, they heard the buffalo coming down to the river to drink and came over to investigate. Very shortly, they started hunting the buffalo. The buffalo had no idea that the lions were there. I think the wind changed or a single buffalo caught their scent and then alerted the rest of the herd. The youngsters made a rush at the buffalo who got startled and rushed back up the bank. One of the other guides was viewing the buffalo and lions from the opposite bank. I just happened to be on the same bank as the buffalo. As they came running away from the lions, they split up on either side of the vehicle. Like parting the Red Sea, moved all the way around his vehicle. It must have been pretty frightening from his perspective. The buffalo was sort of hiding behind the vehicle and looking around the corner. There were some that actually jostled the vehicle and it is very intimidating as a guest for the first time, you know. It's maybe the first time you've seen lions and buffalo in your life. But they were so focused on each other that, uh, you know, there was nothing aggressive towards us. Now you're going to run away. The buffalo just grouped together as a, a solid mass and just charged down the bank. You know, and the lions just couldn't stand there, but they didn't want to back down either. The youngsters are kind of eyeballing the buffalo. Being a bit young and inexperienced, they thought that they could maybe try and catch one of the buffalo. You can only gain experience by trying. You know, and they tried. <laughs> you can see the youngster trapped behind a wild date palm. The big buffalo bull runs around and tries to get hold of him. Look at his tail thrashing, you can tell he's unhappy. Go and grab him, boy, come on. Look at him thrashing his tail around, look at this. Look at that, unbelievable. Right? Can you believe it? It's almost like watching sports in a way. You get so excited, you don't know where to look. Despite their best efforts, the young lions failed to catch any buffalo, but provided the guests with thrilling live entertainment. You see that big bull? He'll take them on by himself. He really will. <laughs> Watching this whole scene unveil in front of us, which was quite spectacular, especially with the sun setting and all the dust and the noises of the buffalo bellowing and the lions charging in. Two of the superpowers of the natural worlds going at each other is just an amazing thing to witness.
Only professionally trained guides are allowed to conduct open vehicle game drives in commercial game reserves, thus helping to ensure a safe and informative experience. But there are still rules the guests must abide by. Because we tend to be fairly close to the animals, we do have a few rules like no making loud noises, no standing up in the vehicles. If you were to stand up in the vehicle, you're making yourself big and it's an aggressive act. And the animals might interpret that and feel like they need to defend themselves. And when an elephant or a lion defends itself, <laughs> you know, it's quite serious. Kirsten Edwards was on a romantic weekend away with her boyfriend when she found out just how serious. We took a game vehicle out into the thick of the bush. Our guide offered us an opportunity to go on a walking safari, which is incredible because it's something I've never done before. It felt very vulnerable out of the safety of a vehicle. We were walking through the bush with the ranger and I assume he was tracking the elephants. I couldn't see anything, but he looked pretty experienced and we seemed to be heading in the right direction because we started hearing them and seeing the broken twigs of where they had been. Suddenly he lifted his hand up for us to stop and to get down, which made me very nervous. He signaled to us where we needed to look. We saw the bush move and realised that it was actually an elephant, 10 or 15 metres away from us. The ranger told us that it was a young bull elephant. It looked like a huge grown elephant to me. We followed them for quite a while through the bush, for about 500 metres to a kilometre or so. Too close for my liking, but it was close enough for the rangers. Catching glimpses of them every now and again, but otherwise mostly hearing them. And then the tracker felt that it was time to turn back. I think he sensed if we pushed any harder, it might turn into a dangerous situation. So we then turned around and started walking back, but still with the cautiousness that we had tracking them. I think because in a situation like that, it can turn so quickly. 